Today's video is all about a nation stuck between a rock and a hard place and how we can get out of that bad situation and turn it into something that becomes truly great. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we have another one of our 19 faction guides for RAS version 0.6. If you're looking for any others, check out the description down below and you'll find the playlist for all of these guides. And today's guide, of course, is on the glorious nation of Syracuse. Now, this is probably one of the most rewarding and fun campaigns you can have in the game, in my opinion, in 0.6. But it is a brutal campaign. You are stuck between a rock and a hard place between Rome and Carthage right from the start of the game. And both of them come bearing down on you pretty quickly. So in general, it is a very rewarding campaign. But again, it's probably one for the more experienced players uh, out there. Probably quite a difficult one if you are new to the game. But if you want to just uh, Turtle Island, take Sicily and stay there, I'm not going to stop you. That's always a good tactic that you can have. And in fact, I might do a video on that tactic at some point as well. You do start with Syracuse, which is a minor city and in a pretty decent situation right from the start. Over here as well, we've got a large town, and we've got four more large towns on the east coast of Sicily. So a really quite decent roster of areas that you have. You are, of course, a Dorian, so these other cultures in here are a little bit of a problem for you. But apart from that, you're in a relatively strong starting position if you weren't surrounded by two of the largest empires of the time. <laughs> So this nation does have a few rather good strengths. You start with a good army at the start. You can see pretty darn nice little stack of troops you've got here. And it's definitely enough for you to start going and taking some of these other regions in the area. You also have very good hoplites at your disposal. If we go into uh, recruitment number four here, we do have access to the Peloponnesian hoplites if we get to third tier barracks and above and these boys are a really good hoplite unit 42 defense 17 morale and 13 melee attack that's without any upgrades or experience so these guys are a very good hoplite unit if you are after a very good hoplite nation you also start with the ability to have a very strong economy early in the game with your five large towns and one minor city with the ability to build ports in all of these places, you are going to become quite rich very quickly if you know what you're doing. So a great starting position in terms of the economy. And lastly, another strength that we have, we have some very good generals that you have access to right from the start of the game. Heraclides over here is a five-star general. Neomenios is only 22 and already a two-star general. Italios is a four-star general. And over here, Artemidoros is a five-star general as well. So some really good generals for you to start the game with. So let's talk about the weaknesses a little bit. You are, of course, I mean, this is the biggest weakness. We've already talked about it. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, quite literally. You've got Carthage over here, Rome over here, both of which will not want to border you and stay at peace. So you are not in a good starting position in terms of your enemies. Two of the hardest enemies to fight in the game right there. Well, one of the hardest enemies to fight in the game. But, uh, you know, Carthage <laughs> isn't so hard to fight. But combined with this stuck between a rock and a hard place thing, Carthage does actually start with a decent army over here. If we, uh, if we toggle the fog of war on, uh, sorry, off, you'll be able to see they start with an army over here. And this army includes two units of elephants, guys. Two units of elephants. So, yeah, you've got to fight that army if you want to uh, survive and thrive on the Sicilian island of Sicily. Yeah, the Sicilian island of Sicily. Some uh, incredible lines coming out of us today. <laughs> 
Um, secondly, guys, one of your other weaknesses is you have no phalangites available to you um, through your main recruitment. Now, you could go and try and get some AOR ones from Taras eventually, if you wanted to, or even Epirus. But uh, there isn't really much AOR recruitment available for these boys uh, for Phalangites in this region. I mean, even if we look here, it's still just our homeland units. So there's not a huge amount of AOR recruitment around you unless you're getting up into the Roman lands. And you don't really want AOR recruitment from, uh, from uh, Carthage because their early game units are trash. So <laughs> you don't have much AOR to start with. Uh, and that is the final weakness, of course, along with the fact that you've got to fight elephants right from the start. Well, let's move on to the unit roster then of Syracuse. So here we are with the Syracusan unit roster. And of course, like I said in the Massalia video, I have done a full unit roster review on all of these unit rosters. They may be slightly changed from when I did those reviews, but uh, they are still very relevant to this day. So you can check those out in the description down below but your unit roster is fairly decent as syracuse obviously missing there are no phalangites at all so you want to get to a place where you can get aor phalangites and that is very likely the closest place being epirus if you can get there at some point probably a much later down the line but uh your syracuse and hoplites are sort of a bit of an interesting one because they actually perform like a thurio foro they have two javis as well but the thurio foro are actually just better uh, for the syracusans so if you can get the sisel thurio foro get those instead of the hoplites but there's one thing that you do get the peloponnesian hoplites uh, over on sicily and that is obviously linked to syracuse and their history and these guys are absolute beasts for a hoplite 42 defense 17 morale and 13 melee attack a very elite hoplite so i would recommend getting these guys as quick as you can a very good hoplite for you early game and gonna do some absolute beastly damage to the carthaginians now your uh, your uh, your options for missile troops are very long and very good you have the neoniscoi which are a decent archer unit 17 defense five missile attack not long range, unfortunately, but you've got plenty of other sort of units as well. You've got the Uzonoi over here as well, which are a really good Javi uh, unit if you want them uh, to be a Javi unit. You've also got the Akontistai, all of those sorts of boys. And uh, yeah, really good uh, Javelin options if you want for the game. You also, from the start, get access to a very versatile cavalry unit over here which is the syracusan cavalry and they are a really good cavalry unit 29 defense which is fantastic for a cavalry unit 40 charge 16 morale 11 melee attack as well and they do hold spears but they've got 13 alt attack with a secondary sword that they have so they're going to do well in extended melee not just on the charge with that 40 charge they are a very good cavalry unit and very versatile as well although they are heavy so they will be slightly slower than the light cavalry of course you get a cavalry general which are always fantastic but after the reforms the first reform is to fight 20 battles you will get access to the syracusan thorakitai now when you get access to these boys although they might not have the defense of the old uh, peloponnesian hoplites you can see difference and they've also got one less melee attack and one less morale. But these guys are beastly. They are very good. All the Thorakitai units are very good, guys. So even though it says they've got one less melee attack than the Hoplites, they will do more damage because they have a sword rather than a spear. So when you can, what I would recommend is having, you know, a mix of the Hoplites and the Thorakitai and using them appropriately. Thorakitai versus infantry and Hoplites versus cavalry along with that you get the thurio foroi cavalry with that reform and uh, that is fine i don't like missile cavalry but if you like missile cavalry they are just a better version of the prodromoi and then your second reform is to own all of sicily and with that you get access to the spido foroi which are over here which are a decent unit so they are a really good unit as well 15 12 11 
But compared to the Syracusan Cavalry, you can see they're just slightly better in different areas. Slightly worse charge, but a bit more shield. So maybe a little bit better against missiles than the Syracusan Cavalry. But maybe slightly less good on the charge and in melee. So that is the uh, trade-off you get there with these boys. But like I say, the Syracusan Cavalry is a fantastic cavalry unit that you get right from the start. So... Uh, and you do also get access to the Tarantine Cavalry if you take Taras, of course, an AOR unit there as well, which are a really good missile cavalry unit. So, with the roster, like I say, you want to be able to get the Peloponnesian Hoplites pretty early on. Get the Thurio Foroi if you can get them uh, at the start because you won't have access to getting the Peloponnesians right away. And then start moving towards the Syracuse and Thoracitae and mix in some of the Syracusan cavalry because they're a fantastic cavalry unit. Overall, a decent roster, but you don't have access to phalangites, which is your major downside for this roster, especially when you want to be defending cities against the Romans. Um, so that is your major downside, but everything else is pretty well balanced and you're going to have a decent time, especially against Carthage. Now, if you want to kill Carthage's elephants, you want archers. So get the Neoniskoi or the Greek archers, put them on flaming shot, and you should make the elephants go mad. But guys, back onto the campaign map. So let's now come on to the building roster. And like we say, you don't need to have a look at the rest of the building roster. It is all the standard Greek roster. But with the only thing we're going to look at is the religious tab down here. Now we have a few different shrines. We have the shrine to Demeter over here. Now this is a really good one for you guys to have in your homeland states because you get loads of population growth and increased farmland size which gives additional taxable income per turn for your farmlands now this area has some very high fertility in syracuse as well and high over here the other places i think are about medium and low yeah low and medium but in syracuse and this land over here either side of syracuse with the high fertility this is a fantastic temple to build. I mean, even just level one, if we build in here, you can see, yeah, 68 gold just from this temple, which is the same as, for example, getting the communal farming next level. So it's a really good building to add into your high fertility regions. Along with this, you also get the shrine to Nemesis. The Shrine to Nemesis. And this is one that just provides a bit of extra law, pretty much. So a little bit of extra law and also a reduction in the construction cost of military buildings. So this is the one that you want to have far away. But with that as well, you do also get the bonus due to law from the Shrine to Athena, your third shrine. So it's a choice between... Uh, religious buildings construction cost reduction or military building construction cost reduction for your faraway settlements where you want law to reduce corruption. So let's come round to the bit you've all been waiting for, guys. That is the starting moves of Syracuse. And Syracuse is a very interesting one because it's one that you have multiple choices right from the start. My strong recommendation, guys, is not to go for Masana early on. Mainly because Romans, as you can see, have a pretty nice army here. And if they take Regium and you take Masana, pretty much they're going to go to war with you straight away. Ideally, in this game, you want to avoid war with Rome as long as possible until at least you've consolidated uh, Sicily. At least. Because ultimately, I want you to go and take this bit of North Africa as well before you get with Rome. But it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. But if you border them through Masana, they will come and attack you very quickly. Now, there's a good chance that when they attack Regium, they will suffer enough losses that they can't take Masana straight away. So if you took it, they would then attack you. But if you don't take it, it will buy you quite a bit of time against the Romans, guys. Obviously, like I've said in my previous one as Massalia, always mold yourself to your RNG. So if the Romans just tank through both of these settlements and attack you straight away, you're, of course, going to have to abandon uh, ideas of valor and conquest over here in the western edge of Sicily and just try and beat the Romans back. 
But uh, if they don't do that, if they take uh, Regium, have a little bit of a wait, then you will be in a much better position. So that is why I highly recommend not taking Masana straight away. But we do have a very nice army early game. And we've also got a couple of these little regions here. They're actually italic. Uh, italic regions, and they don't have the strongest of garrisons. We've also got Acragas nearby, and we've got Carthage. Now, there are two things that you can do here, really, in my opinion. The first thing is to go straight for Enna over here. You can go straight for Enna, take Enna. It's not the best large town in the world. It doesn't have a coast, so it's not going to trade. Um, but it doesn't border the Carthaginians. So that's one good thing for it. However, the thing that I recommend, but it's up to you whether you want to do this this way through the Rebels first or Acragas first. I would recommend taking out Acragas first, not let them train any more troops, anything like that, and allow uh, you to take out one of the hostile regions in the area very quickly, which I think is a better way to do it. The thing is, you're going to be at war with Carthage eventually, so it doesn't really matter about bordering Carthage right away. But if you are scared of that Carthaginian army full of elephants, go for Enna and Mitistratum first, <laughs> and then uh, probably Acragas, then Carthage. But for me, the best option is to go for Acragas straight away. Now, when you are getting your army, remember that you have a decent-sized army in here but you don't really have a general that's any good your faction leader hiero is not a good general guys at all zero command and although he does have some good uh, traits for morale he is not the one that you want to have as a general he also has three management and a load of influence so having him in syracuse is always a good option to have so we're going to move our army out Something that we can't do on the modern Total War games, move an army by itself. And the person that I would recommend personally is Nemenios, because he's young. Although he has two command compared to some of these guys, the two guys I would say, because they're closer anyway, is Heraclides, because he's only 35 and he's got five command, which is really good. Uh, he's also magnetic and vigorous, just like Nemenios is as well but just because Nemenios is younger I would take him if you want a general stack with two generals you can also do that but I would take the younger general because he's going to have a bit longer to bed in a bit longer to get some better tra uh, better traits all that sort of thing so we're going to combine those armies together and we're going to move down into Acragas but we are not going to attack Acragas at all on this first turn now the rest of what we're going to do we're going to do the standard thing of min maxing our economy so i'm going to move you across into there because this was an unhappy region and we're going to keep it on low how about leontinoi we can only go down to low but syracuse we can definitely go up to very high uh, over here we can also go up to very high probably not over here but tandaris we definitely can so now we're making 1200 a turn do we need any more military? That is the question. At this point, I would suggest that getting more military is probably not necessary, but we are going to queue in a Thuriophoroi straight away because the Thuriophoroi are actually a little bit better than your hoplite options. So we're going to get a Thuriophoroi straight away because they take two turns to be done now, guys. And along with that, we're going to have a look for the best option uh, as a building down here. Now, from my, uh, from my uh, looking around, I think the port in Turo Menion is the best option. 219. Katana over here. That's also 218. And Tindaris, only 77. Camarina does have a port. So if we got a, a market, no, does nothing. So I think spending all of your money on this port is something that's a good option very early on. And then the rest of your money you can probably spend on a nice cheap land clearance over here and get an extra 68 as well. Those are the two buildings I think is best. And ideally what we're going to be trying to do is trying to build up all of these areas that don't have a port to get a port as quick as possible. Because instantly having six areas all trading uh, with each other through the sea 
is a fantastic way to start the game. Along with that, we are going to have a look at getting a, a trade agreement with the Romans so that we can trade Most with them. And also potentially an alliance. We did accept that. We are on very hard campaign difficulty, so they did accept that. That will just put them off from attacking you for a little bit longer. And let's also try and squeeze some money out of them. Not 6,000, 600. Some extra money. No, nope, they can't take decline. that deal. So uh, with, we do now have an alliance with Rome. Uh, and we're also going to try and get a trade agreement with Carthage to put them off fighting us as long as possible. Because if you have a trade agreement with them, uh, they're less likely to attack you. One little tip though, guys. If the AI ever offers you trade agreement and nothing else, just trade. I don't know why, <laughs> but it's it's pretty much a surefire way of knowing that they're going to attack you in the next couple of turns. So if the AI comes and offers you trade, it's very likely they're going to attack you if they are bordering you, of course. So uh, yeah, that's uh, just a little tip. Tip of the day from me there. Uh, so if they do that, I know it sounds weird, but just trust me, you'll you'll notice it from now on. Now I've said it. But anyway, we're gonna wait for the end turn to uh, to to be done, and I'll see you again when we attack Acragas. So here we are, guys, and Acragas actually did exactly what we we're expecting. We're also gonna take this husband uh, early on, very quickly, because we want this guy to go and go into Leontini, Tini, so we can put the tax rate back up there as well. So what tends to happen to Acragas on the first turn, guys? I've seen this multiple times now is they will leave a draw-out battle there for you. Now, these guys over here, um, if, I think if if you just, if I'd have stayed inside my own territory, it's more likely they would have had these combined armies together. But this guy's just go, came and had a look at us. <laughs> so we are going to attack them now for the draw-out battle. And of course, we're going to auto-resolve this, but... Surprise, motherfucker. Clear defeat. Well, let's reload that in then, shall we, guys? <laughs> so, through the glorious power of editing, we're back here. <laughs> let's try that again, shall we? I mean, obviously, fighting this battle on the battlefield, you're going to absolutely destroy them. So, I don't know why um, the uh, <laughs> the auto-resolve absolutely destroyed us there. Because we're not actually besieging the settlement down or anything. We're just doing that. So now we're going to siege it down. If you wanted to uh, make this faster, of course, don't auto-resolve. Fight that battle. But like I said previously in the Masalia video, if I fought all these battles, we'd pretty much be starting a brand new campaign and I'd be here for multiple hours rather than one or two <laughs> doing these videos. <laughs> so I wouldn't be able to get all 19 out to you guys in good time. So we are going to be auto-resolving all of the battles, of course, uh, and using a few console commands. But like I say... You know, that, that battle, we would have absolutely smashed them. Like, it wouldn't have been a problem at all. So, uh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, we've got another suitable husband. Oh, we, uh, we, didn't, we didn't get that guy, of course. So, send him across. Good. Fantastic. Right then. Well, I will see you in a, a little bit, guys, when Acragas is ours. So, now that we have taken Acragas, we again have some more choices to make. If you take Acragas and do the battles manually, it's very likely that you're going to have a much stronger army than this uh, already still there. And you could go and probably beat this army because it's predominantly Javis, and this infantry is not fantastic. It looks like a good stat for these guys, but uh, yeah, 41 defense. 60 melee attack for a spearman is good. Of course, but they've only got one of those boys. And these Libyan light infantry are not good at all. So, you know, with your cavalry, with your hoplites, if they're all good standard, you could probably beat this army. Remember to use flaming arrows with your archers, and it very quickly makes the elephants go mad. And I'm sure you would be okay if you want to. But completely up to you whether you want to do that, guys. Uh, and like I say, let's get you into there. And what we're going to do, now that we've taken that settlement, my next plan for this would be then to go after here or after here. Because their armies are not that strong. And I think if I played this manually, I could win those battles. 
So we will do that to start with. How is Acragas? Already fine. We can already get it up to high. And we make sure we delete this recruitment building. That's going to give us quite a bit of cash. And instantly we're making 5,000. That is very likely due to trade. 2,000 in there. 2,500 trade... Uh, money from Syracuse already, which is crazy good for the start of the campaign. Uh, and this is a fine settlement as well. So we're going to get that in there. And that should allow us then to build ports everywhere else we want to. Let's have a look at how much money it's going to make. 226 still. This one is still not very much, but I would suggest it's still probably worth it. Although the farming, yeah, it's going to, you see how over time it gets so much better. So we are going to get that. We'll also have a land connection with there very soon. So we're going to get ports in there. We're going to get a port in there. And in Syracuse, we are probably just going to go for the shrine to Demeter. Because it's cheaper than the farming and it creates the same amount of money as the farming does itself. Over here, we can still afford farming. So let's get our final bit of farming in there. And finally, for this, we'll go to Trader. So... Two turns in, guys. Uh, yeah, two turns in. We have already taken Acrogas, making 5,000 a turn, and we're building everywhere, which is pretty nice. So like I say, up to you. If you've still got a strong army and you think you can beat two elephants, go after this Carthaginian army, because if you destroy it, you have free reign for all these settlements. If not, go after these rebel settlements and go and uh, try and take them out, and you will be in a very good situation once you've taken those two out. So once I've taken these out, guys, I will come back and I will show you what we're going to do next. So we've now taken Enna in the center. We did also get attacked with our ships. I even I forgot that we had ships out here. And very similar to the Massalian campaign, you can delete these if you want for some extra uh, income at the start of the game. They are... How much are they? They're only 134 now that they've uh, they, they've taken a bit of damage. But they're probably only about 500 income between them. But like I say, once you've taken Acragas, your income is going to be sky high. You are going to be fine, guys. It's not going to be a problem at all. Uh, so we, now we've taken Enna, we have some very damaged boys. So we are going to leave Enna straight away and see what the public order is like. 45%, we can get it happy. We're going to go straight back to Syracuse for retraining and retrain this whole army or at least all of the army we can afford i don't believe oh we have built yeah we're still building everywhere so we don't need to worry about that too much and we're also going to try and get a trade agreement with carthage itself just to put them off and make some extra money while we are consolidating these rebel territories and then we're going to go after this army and we can take the rest of Sicily at that point. So as you can see, guys, Carthage have came and blockaded uh, Acragas over here. And we are now at war with Carthage. The one good thing that we have is that Rome hasn't taken Regium yet. And this is what I mean about not taking Masana. They are much more likely to come and attack you early on if you take Masana. That is why we haven't done that. But now that we are at war with Carthage, as soon as this happens, guys... The first thing you've got to do is just go and kill this army. Once you've killed this army, you will have free reign to take all of these settlements. Pretty much all in one go-ish. Close to one go. If we had some mercenaries, even... Oh. We'd be very close to taking all of these places in one go. Because they're all just garrisoned by nothing. Absolutely nothing. So uh, we're going to go take out that army, of course. And now we don't quite have all our ports yet, but we are building in quite a few different places. So with the rest of our money, we've got another guy training over here. Do we have any more recruitment hubs? We do have a few. So, yeah, it's just those two. Three, it looks like. So the recruitment hub situation, we're not in a great situation with it. But we are going to get another hoplite there just in case. And then we're also going to build in Camarina. And I'm thinking we go for the Shrine to Demeter. Because, you know, 70, uh, 76 income early on from this building is not too bad at all, to be honest. Not too bad at all. And like, unlike Massalia, guys, like we say, 
you don't really get AOR troops down here because this is all your homeland. So you shouldn't really get AOR troops. You might actually from recruitment buildings in the center because they're italic. But no, it's just Cicels, which is your guys. So uh, unless level three, no, it's just Cicels, which is your guys. So uh, yeah, you aren't really going to get much AOR. We might get it if we came across over here to uh, to Carthage. But uh, that is to be to be found out. So we are going to go and kill this army. And when we've done that, we should be ready to take on the rest of Sicily. So guys, we've now got ports in all of these areas. And we are suddenly making a little bit extra cash. 2,977 in Syracuse now because of that trade. So it's really good to get those ports in nice and early. This one was only on about... 800 at the start, now 1,600, 1,600 over here as well, 1,700, really, really good to see indeed. But we have come and found this army, Himilco, and uh, they are protecting Selinus over here, so it will be a draw-out battle, and that is perfect for us. Hi, guys. So... I have had a couple of days between recording these sections of the guide. <laughs> and unfortunately, this battle no longer works because uh, there has been a new beta come out. And uh, of course, when a new beta com comes out, the previous save shouldn't really be playable. So we are going to try <laughs> and play the rest of this save. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to try and auto-resolve this to start with. We are going to use the console uh, commands as usual and see whether it works Okay, so we didn't get a crash then that's good <laughs> That's always good did lose quite a lot of men more men than I probably would if I'd played that myself So of course, let me know uh, Let me tell you what I would do if we'd have won that battle on the battlefield So if we'd won that battle on the battlefield and taken them out and been able to take Selenus in the time Remember, guys, you need to kill 85% of both of the armies to fully destroy them. So it's got to be more than 85% and kill the generals. So if the general survives, even if you kill 99% and one single general survives, the army will survive. So you've got to kill 85% of both of them. So I would aim to do that with this battle. And hopefully that would allow us to have taken Selenus by itself. Now, at that point, what I would then do is split my army into four separate armies and siege down each of these with the appropriate amount of troops because a lot of them just have one or two troops, as you can see. And if they came and uh, sallied out, we would kill them. Uh, but apart from that, we would uh, go and siege them down, probably on the battlefield as well. And after that, you know, hopefully we can take all these four in one easy go. So, let's siege this down though. So, we have been slowed down slightly. And I'll be back once we've taken the settlement and have started consolidating a few of these regions. So, guys, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know why I thought it would work. But, of course, it doesn't. When we press the end turn, crash again. And, of course, that is just what happens when you get an updated, <laughs> updated version of the mod. Uh, and you're playing on a previous version. Uh, it doesn't normally work. So I was just hoping beyond hope that uh, it would work, unfortunately. But it's fine. I can tell you what I would do in this situation. So we are sieging down Selenus here. It's five turns to siege down. I've had to re-auto-resolve this battle as well. Uh, so it's slightly different results. Now, if I was playing, I would have played that battle and hopefully have taken Selenus. And at that point... Like I say, I would have split up all the troops so that they could all siege down these four all at once, guys. And you can absolutely blitz the rest of these Carthaginian provinces. Now, if you don't destroy the army, hopefully you will have destroyed enough of it so that you can still do this across five provinces. Now, it might be slightly difficult, but if they come out of the city, then that's no problem for you. You should be able to take them out piecemeal. Whereas if you are assaulting the city, then it's going to be slightly more difficult for somewhere like this, for example. But I'm sure you could do it with some good little action from a couple of hoplites and some archers and maybe a prodromoi, etc. Now, once all of those are taken, I would send my army back 
to uh, Syracuse for retraining. And we would take that final um, uh, rebel settlement in the middle as well. So when you've consolidated Sicily, this is where you have plenty of choices. I would keep an eye on Regium. Like I say, mold yourself to your RNG, guys. As soon as Rome takes Regium, then it's up to you. You can either go and take Masana, or you can wait for Rome to take it themselves, and then swoop in and push them back. The thing being, as soon as Rome does take Masana, they will declare war on you pretty much straight away. So it's up to you what you want to do with that one. But once you have taken Sicily, there are a few things you can do. Like I say, wait for Rome. That's one option. And go against Rome. I would suggest that's a harder option. But always remember, if Rome does declare war on you, you're going to have to focus 100% on them. Because they, of course, are a very strong enemy. Secondly, once you've taken all of Sicily, you can actually turtle a little bit. Play a little bit tall. Get some economic buildings. Get a full stack of troops. And just use those troops to defend Sicily for 10, 20 turns. Whatever amount of turns you want to do. Completely up to you. That is also an option with Syracuse, which is quite an interesting one. And I hope to do a video on that in the future. To show you guys that you can actually play tall a little bit in this game. Which Total War has never been designed, in my opinion, to play tall. So it's quite an interesting one that you can do. Is to try and play tall as Syracuse for a little bit. But your third option is, of course, to sail across to Carthage and take out Carthage. Now, Carthage in its actual home territories is generally quite weak and often is fighting the Numidians. So, you can sail across, take this little area, but do remember, as soon as you get into North Africa, you are going to be in a protracted and long-lasting war with Carthage because they have land all the way across North Africa, all the way up to Spain, and all the way down here as well. So, it's completely up to you what you want to do. But I would suggest that's a very long-term option. So, my suggestion would be to take all of these settlements, settle down for a little bit, get as much money as you can uh, from your buildings, building ports in all these regions so they're all trading with each other, and then looking to potentially go after Carthage so that you've got enough money coming in so that if Rome attacks, you can have maybe a half-stack in one of these settlements that can defend relatively well against a Roman army. Like I say, always be on the lookout for Rome. It's completely, completely the most important facet of this. But if you are lucky like me and Rome has not attacked, then I would suggest you can go after Carthage. You can see Rome's actually going north more likely rather than down south. I don't know why, but that is just complete RNG, guys. There is a chance that Rome will come after here right from the start. So if they do that, you're going to have to take Sicily and then focus on Rome. If Rome doesn't do that, then focus on Carthage. You can see lots of juicy territories up here, including Carthage, which is a large city from the start of the game, which is very nice to take lots of trade and money up here, as well as some very high fertility around this region, which of course will bring you lots of money and lots of trade goods. Look at all the trade goods in some of these regions. Some very nice trade goods, you know, elephants, grain, olive oil, that sort of thing. So you're going to be doing very well if you come up here. But like I say, it's going to be a quite protracted and long-lasting war because Carthage have settlements all the way down here. So it's up to you what you want to do at that point. You can go after Carthage completely uh, and take them out in their home hub and then maybe try and get a ceasefire. But like I say, it's very unlikely you'll get a ceasefire with Carthage. They come all the way down to here, guys, as well. So it is, yeah, it's going to be a long war if you do that. But like I say, depends on what Rome does. Always be on the lookout for Rome. So those are my suggestions and starting tips and tricks and starting moves for Syracuse. It is a difficult nation. But you do... There's some things that, that bring it into being maybe a little bit easier than completely impossible. And those are the facts that you start with a really good economic base and you can become an economic hub pretty quickly in the old game. So it's completely... Uh, it, and it completely depends on RNG as 
well. But difficulty-wise, I am going to give this a 5 out of 5 difficulty-wise. Because although you can consolidate Sicily very quickly, if you do get attacked by Rome, yeah, it's, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult. Carthage, on the other hand, is a lot easier target because their armies early game are pretty trash apart from the elephants. Like, they don't have r very many good troops early game, mainly just skirmisher troops. So if you've got some cav, you should be able to mop those boys up pretty quickly. But you're still stuck between two of the largest empires at the start of the game. And Rome, of course, is pretty darn difficult to beat, especially now with all the added cities because they've got such a bigger economic hub now than they used to. One tip for fighting Rome, guys, that you might not have heard before. If you are fighting Rome's armies, the way I would recommend doing it is because their troops are so much more powerful than yours, I would go for one elite army that are full of your best troops. So if we go on to the unit roster, like we've said in the unit roster video, you want to be getting some Peloponnesian hoplites, um, I mean, your hoplites are fine as well, but when you get the reforms, the Thoracitae are fantastic, and the Syracusan Aspidophoroi are great as well. So an army's full of those, that'd be great. And once you get those boys, then you will have one army full of your best elite troops, and a second army full of Acontistae, Prodromoi, a general maybe as well, maybe some Uzonoi, and maybe just a few different cavalry units, and maybe like four or five Theroperoi or something like that. And that army will be there as an AI army to bring into the battle. You'll attack with your elite army, and bring the other army in as an AI army. Now, this second army is purely sacrificial. It is there to just do hit point damage to the Romans, because by using a lot of, a lot of skirmisher and javelin troops... They will do an absolute ton of skirmisher damage to the Romans before probably being absolutely marmalized when the Romans get into melee with them. But let the AI army get marmalized, and when they have done all the hit point damage that they can, swoop in with your elite army and hopefully take out the Romans without too much <laughs> of a challenge. But even with this tactic, the Romans are still hard to beat, guys. So, uh, yeah. Be wary with that one, but use that second army. And the good thing with that is it's all ch cheap troops, all your cheapest level of troops. So like the Acontistae are only a 1,000, but their upkeep is not much. 370 compared to like a three or four, which is nearly double that. So yeah, that is what you want to do against the Romans. But anyway, guys, I think that is going to make it for today. I'm sorry I couldn't keep on playing this like I wanted to until we'd taken Sicily. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, but anyway, I hope it has been helpful as well. But it is a very difficult faction, Syracuse. Like Massalia, I can't re remember what we gave to Massalia. Was it 4.5 or 4? Uh, and that is because of your early game ease getting all of this territory. Whereas with Syracuse, your early game is going to be relatively difficult, especially if Rome takes Regium straight away. Then you're in for a world of hurt. So yes, of course, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 for difficulty. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Please do like and subscribe if you are enjoying these faction guides, and you can check out all the rest of them down in the description down below. But thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you all again on the next video.